This guy is just doubling down on hatred and lies. <laughs> David Menzies for Rebel News here in Thornhill, Ontario. And folks, I'm back once again at the Madi Islamic Center. Now, I was here on Sunday to cover a protest against the Iranian regime. And the reason why this particular mosque is targeted, the allegations of the demonstrators is are that this mosque has close ties to the Iranian regime. It is alleged that money laundering is happening here. And that is why, once again, the demonstrators, many of them expatriate Iranians now living in Canada, targeted the center. Now, here's the thing. As the demonstration was winding down, my camera woman and I, we left. And I wish we hadn't because just 15 minutes after we left, there was a potential terror attack. I guess there's no way, uh, other way of putting it. It involved an individual driving a white Kia SUV. And at one point, it looked as though he was going to make a run for the demonstrators that were on that sidewalk just to the uh, north of me. Here, check out the video. Now, folks, what made this attack equal parts brazen, shocking, and egregious was the fact that there were already York Regional Police officers on site, and yet this individual, he did not care. He was still potentially going to do some damage. Well, the police did arrest him after he fled, and this individual is known as Faraz al Najim. He's 38. He lives in Toronto and he's been charged with dangerous operation of a motor vehicle, flight from police, and weapons dangerous. Now, this individual, it turns out, has a very checkered past, although you won't learn about it from the mainstream media here in Canada. In fact, as of Tuesday afternoon when I did a Google News search, only one mainstream media outlet had reported on that. That would be Global News. It was a very brief report. No, you had to go to the Jer Jerusalem Post to get all the information on this individual. And my goodness, does he ever have a checkered past. For example, he is affiliated with an organization called Canadian Defenders for Human Rights, also known as CD4HR. It's a registered nonprofit organization, but it's mostly focused on anti-Israel activism. Although in recent weeks, given the situation in Iran, uh, this organization is increasingly focused on pro-regime advocacy, if you can imagine. Now, the Jerusalem Post notes that al Najim has been involved in many nefarious activities. For example, he went to a kosher supermarket back on Dominion Day and he was harassing and intimidating Jewish customers. And then on September 11th of all dates, he went to a Jewish area and was harassing Holocaust survivors. And get a load of this, he was dressed as an Orthodox Jew while doing it. This is outrageous. But in any event, uh, he spent a night in jail and uh, he has been charged with those crimes. And we are just going to keep an eye on this case and find out A, if he's convicted and B, uh, how much, what sort of a sentence he's going to receive. By the way, if you can imagine 
the chutzpah of this individual. He has, he has taken to social media and he has called his arrest unjust. He says he's hopeful all the charges will be dismissed in court. And he implied that the Jewish MP for this area, that would be Melissa Lansman and her Zionist friends, they are the ones that were really behind the demonstration. Uh, this guy is just doubling down on hatred and lies, and it is astonishing. So in the weeks ahead, like I said, folks, we're going to keep our eye on this case. And I want to ask this too. There was anti-regime graffiti painted on this mosque uh, more than a week ago. And the mainstream media was falling over themselves. They were reporting it as Islamophobia, even though it wasn't anti-Muslim graffiti, it was anti-Iranian regime graffiti. Iran, of course, is the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism. It is a misogynistic regime, and yet they ran with this. But when that attack happened on Sunday, as I said, a brief item in Global News, and to get all the details, you have to reach out to foreign media. Gee, I wonder why that would be. By the way, we did reach out to the mosque to see if they have a connection with al Najim, and uh, I have not received um, a, a call back. And I've reached out to uh, al Najim as well, left him a phone message at time of recording. He hasn't uh, gotten back to us either. But like I said, we're going to keep an eye on this case, and I hope you will too. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Well, folks, here we are at Pearson International Airport, home to the newest merry band of censorious thugs. You see, Pearson wants media people to give them 24 hours notice when they show up to cover a story. They might deny you, they might approve you, who knows? Oh, and they're gonna send an escort along with you, you know, to monitor the questions you're asking. Yeah, sounds pretty Orwellian to me as well. In any event, you know we love to give you the other side of the story, the side of the story the mainstream media isn't reporting. So if you can go to rebelinvestigates.com, that's rebelinvestigates.com, and if you can chip in a buck or three, we would greatly appreciate it.